Telemasters reported interim results today, a pre-tax profit of just over 2 million rand. The chief executive, Mario Pretorius, joins us for a closer look at this business. I, I guess, Mario, in, in your stage of life, you guys are an Altex listing, you, uh, you, you tightly held the shares, or they don't mm -hmm. trade that often, so uh, day by day the market cap can vi uh, change a lot. But it's 35 million, which you kind of think, is it really worthwhile with all the costs of being on the JSC even being listed? You know, I think we looked at that a while ago, about two year and a half ago. <clears throat> I spoke to my, my main shareholders and said, well, much of a muchness, we'd rather be listed. And it seems you punch a little bit above your weight when you're listed, when you come to a client and says, please trust us, than you do when you're not. The accounting and the um, auditing requirements is very much the same. So we have an, uh, an, an additional expense. We pay our designated advisors, our breaches are okay. And that's about the only other cost we have. So it's worth staying listed? I, th I think so. But when you listed in the first place, mm. you must have had greater ambitions by now that this yes. company would be 350 million rather uh, than 35 million. Still, still, hasn't gone away. We at one stage, we had just over 100 million market cap, which is kind of where we want to be again, but it's, it's not reflective. I think my market cap in some way is not really reflective because it's so tightly held. If it's wider distributed, I mean, you saw it goes up to 85, 90 cents and goes to 55 cents. So you know, when you want to be, you want to be the 50 million one or the 30 million one. Mm. It might matter to my shareholders, although we're a dividend play, Alex, we're not as much, um, you know, invest in us and get a fantastic capital growth and then climb out. So where is it that, and we were talking earlier to Wilhelm mm. uh, Herzog from regarding capital management, he said, mm. look in the Altex as mm. a private investor, mm. look for gems. Someone analyzing your share now, mm. a private shareholder, where would they see the exciting the excitement coming from? Can I, can I step one step backward and tell me when we listed what we did? Seven years ago, we were pure lease cost routine play and we were growing like the clappers because everybody was in the bandwagon and we did extremely well. Came the moment when the Fentas kicked all down the doors of Icasa and suddenly there was almost 400 fixed line licenses available. It's never happened in the world. So we picked the license up and we looked at this thing and there's no manual to go with it. So we decided we're gonna attempt to build a, a fixed line platform which of course the costs is the interconnect. We're not getting paid by commission, but you now in charge of your own, own destiny. It took us a little longer than we thought we would to get this thing right and straight and quality, and now it is flying. So we spent uh, almost two years getting the quality perfect. We're the only guys that provide a second network for all our clients where the first one fails, small things like that. Mm -hmm. So now it's a question of the whip. Chase the sales, get it up again. You had noticed from our margins, our margins improved from in the last two years from 14.5%, it's now 29. It should go to probably 40. So you've made the investment, it's time now to maybe harvest? Yes, we give you an idea. Telcoms run on size. So we bought the smallest, let's call it the equipment to interconnect, we we're using 5%. So when we're moving 20 times larger, the first time we had to reinvest, we enlarge it. Because telecoms are not small. Fixed line telecoms are not for small guys like us. It's made for big guys. So it's imperative to we get bigger. What is, what is in our favor without us doing it, Alec? Let's be honest about it. It's the fact that the cost decided on this glide path for interconnect to come down.